This is a Mercedes AMG GTS, not a GTR. The GTR had bigger brakes and a roll cage. Otherwise, it's basically the same. Twin turbo V8. We have designed the suspension for basically extending the track width on the car. And the reason for that was because of this custom body kit that's fitted to the chassis. They reached out to me and they said, we usually get these arms from Poland. They take six months to make and they cost this much. And I said, that is ridiculous. I said, ship me the arms. I'll scan the arms. We'll make a replica of them. That is exactly 50 millimeters wider and can still hold up to all the abuse that you might run through a thousand horsepower twin turbo Mercedes. And that is what we have done here, taking all the principles from all of our kits. It's very similar to a Corvette, to be honest, and he still wanted the adjustment because this is mostly a show car. So we have replaced the OEM control arm, which is sitting here on the floor, with the new alloy steel or arm. We're using our smooth adjusters and getting us exactly the 50 millimeters that we needed. Fortunately, this cup here was actually a pressed-in component that was in the stock arm. So all we needed to do was bore this to size and then press in the OEM taper that the ball joints fits in. We needed to shorten the bolt here. I had some motion ratio options. This actually might work out well for him with the stock suspension because he wanted to lower the car anyways, but because of the added extension and the increase in motion ratio, slurring my words this morning because it's early, this is likely going to lower the car anyways. Now, it is also going to make the car ride softer, which is not what you want when you lower a car. Typically, you want to lower it and then up the spring rate, so they may still be going to coilovers. That's up to them. Um, the upper control arm, OEM ball joint, we made this a press fit, and you know everything went really, really well. The only funny thing that we had to do was change the inner tie rod um, we looked up the thread pitches. All Mercedes typically use an M16 1.5 rack thread. We cross-referenced it with all the thread pitches that we could find other cars using that because we needed an inner tie rod that was two inches minimum, 50 mil longer than this one. This one was about nine. We needed somewhere around 11 and we found one. It's a sedan Hyundai Genesis, I believe, that we ended up getting. 23 bucks OEM inner. The boot clips right on. It threads right into the rack. And that way we can continue to maintain the outer ball joint because it actually has this curve here very specifically to clear the knuckle. I'll show you that on the other side. Seamless project, getting better at refining these quick turnarounds for custom things like this because really being able to solve a problem for somebody like this where there is no solutions is a huge advantage benefit. It's a great, you know, job security that we can do stuff like this. So exciting to get this in here these cars are really really cool and the similarities between it and a corvette are actually kind of funny rear transmission the front engine is starting around this point so there is no engine in the front of this it's all cooling and components and and luxury car stuff and intercoolers for the turbos and stuff like that so this car's weight balance it's a total of 3900 pounds for a luxury car actually not that heavy and if you really gutted this thing and wanted to make it, this thing would perform incredibly well. On this side, we do have everything assembled and you can see that uh, Genesis inner tie rod. Beautiful part to replace for $23. I don't even want to know what the Mercedes one is, but I will tell you, they look identical. This is the Mercedes inner. Absolutely nothing special about that, but it might cost you 250 bucks because of this symbol. Right, so the more you know. And there was actually tons of tie rods that could have been used on this, tons. Like Hyundai had various ranges. So it actually gets quite a bit of lock and we had the control arm, if you wanna swoop the camera underneath, possibly. The, the knuckle just maxes out right here on the uh, control arm to knuckle, just before the caliper hits the control arm and just before the wheel hits the control arm. So we have a perfect factory bump stop. We can increase our sway bar ratio here, um, same factory style. So we really did quite a lovely job at uh, building this kit for actually never seeing the car. We only scanned the arms. That's pretty much it for this. We'll uh, show you guys a couple things that we've designed over the last several weeks. Alex worked on something that I'm really happy with, so he's gonna show you that. 
I did some more 3D print stuff, some more things, so I'll show you that here in a second. We're supposed to be working. Are you seriously buying car parts? The reason that we had to come up with something like this is because Joel was there working on the 350. When he went to go do full compression under the strut, this piece here was actually hitting the top of the wheel well. So it wasn't going to work. You lower your car, you got to be able to have full range of motion. So what we did is we came up with a, a much more compact design at first, where it was basically a nut that was a stud built into it. It would thread into the top and replace this set screw here. And then we figured, meh, you can't really machine something like this. It'd be a bit of a pain in the butt for Dylan. So he recommended that we change something. And we went to just like a through nut design, basically like what our smooth adjusters are here in the shop. It's pretty much just an M10 smooth adjuster that goes onto a bearing instead of a heim joint, which super nice, super easy to machine. It'll all be out of uh, stainless 17.4. So a nice high corrosion resistant material for Canada. So another thing we noticed when Joel was doing that is the tapers of the 370 and the tapers of the 350 were actually the same. So we were able to make a one piece fits all kind of situation that should work nicer. It gives you way more room for lowering your car or just suspension movement in general. It's super easy to install. All you have to do is thread your set screw in like this. We'll go in till the bottom is out. This guy 14 mil right on top. Thread that all the way in. And then with that, you still get full range of motion with your bearing and you're roughly an inch shorter. So you got more clearance, you got more travel, maybe a little bit more machine time just because it's two separate parts. But other than that, it's a pretty slick unit, especially considering you can use it on both 350s and 370s now. So that'll be super nice. Glad we could add that to the product list and keep moving forward, keep moving up. I was really busy once again, um, but the one cool thing that I did make, the tubular control arms for the C6 Corvette we are making. Basically we would in high production get these CNC bent and then laser notched. But for the time being, I've 3D printed a jig that actually holds the arbor and the hole saw for us to make the cuts that we need. So I had to make a cut here at this very particular angle. Then I had to make a cut here, once again, at a very particular angle. And you can see, as long as the tube has a 20 degree bend and is flush with the end of this jig, this tube will perfectly fit, once I do the other half, into a Corvette after we TIG weld everything up. Actually really fast, really repeatable. This is just PLA. I did 25% infill with four wall layers and I honestly could have done just the base settings uh, I'm pretty sure because it was absolutely solid I just blasted right through this full speed little bit of lubricant worked really really well too well and it is just a sandwich block so I can separate the two halves and that's the tube sitting in there so slap that together and then I had it on the jig table these flat sections I had for um, clamps and I basically set it up on the table like this so I had access to both points. So showing that's really cool because this is something that you can do at your house completely done through Fusion and obviously you need to know what you're doing in the CAD space but if you have a 3D printer you can convert 3D printed accuracy and precision and alignment and actually turn it into something that is potentially quite profitable if you are able to make repeatable jigs and setups for this stuff. So I'm going to show you this in a second. I've been working on a G42 angle kit. I'll send you a couple photos from Maurice. I actually designed this adapter here on the screen um, to bolt to the factory knuckle. And I wanted to see if I could package this together while still getting um, fully adjustable Ackerman, getting the angle that we needed, getting the trail and caster and KPI and all that stuff that we want. And I was actually able to do it and get it to fit pretty comfortably within an 18 inch wheel um, and still getting a ton of steering angle. As you can see here, we have everything that we would ever want from an angle kit and it all fits nicely, not under the stock vendor. It's quite a bit wider, but this would be considered a mega kit. So this adapter would also work well with a shorter set of um, control arms. 
But that's what I've been working on and I actually sent the files to print over to Maurice. We also made a uh, weld-in rack relocation. It doesn't relocate it, it actually just mounts a hydraulic E90 steering rack to the subframe. And all of this is required for high level competition drift cars. Not so much required for just regular, uh, you could keep using the same electric steering rack on this. So that's really cool. Progressing within the new BMW series has been fun. A lot of their, the way that BMW manufactures cars in the newer models is really quite impressive. Everything is really, really lightweight. It's, and it's so strong. Um, and then another thing I was working on, I made the wheel gray just so you could see it better, but I have made this caster display. Now caster, I'm not gonna go into it because we're gonna do a video on it. It's actually quite, a bit more involved than you would think, especially because most manufacturers do not put the spindle directly in the center of a knuckle. And I just made a way that you could showcase all of the different um, positions that a wheel might be in. And what actually dictates the amount of self-alignment torque you have is this mechanical trail distance that you get between the tire's contact and then the line that passes through the axis, basically what our caster angle is. And then we would have a, a ball joint in these two positions. And you're gonna actually trace that line through where the tire is contacting the road. And it's gonna give you something that looks like, like this. So the table being the road, we can slide this down the scale and we can actually get a distance here. And this distance is actually what's giving you the self-alignment torque, the mechanical trail. And uh, this display is able to illustrate that really, really well uh, visually, and you can play with it and simulate it and do whatever you want. And then I can move the wheel into these different slots, simulating a positive or negative offset. And you really see this commonly in uh, bikes, but we'll talk more about that when we um, do this actual video, but really cool works really well it's not too bad to print so again we're gonna have these files available and we'll have the product sellable uh, very soon so the next thing I'm going to be discussing will be the finalized version of our BMW display this is the complete setup weight reduced down to about 10 hours print for everything that you see here the wheel the knuckle the subframe and all of these nifty control arms and then we'll actually put um, an option to buy these balls. These are nine millimeter balls threaded with M4 um, threads. And uh, we'll provide the screws and we'll just, we'll make it all easy. And then the last thing I added was these um, slide bars. Uh, I basically added these because when the wheel is on and when the shock is locked and the wheel's floating off the ground, it used to um, fall, but I wanted the wheel to be able to float, so. Now we have enough support with these rods that it will maintain its position while you're playing with it on your desk, basically. Okay, so that's how you can mess around with that. That was important to me, um, was just annoying that it didn't do that, because uh, this is how it was before and nobody wants that, right? So run them, don't run them. Totally up to you if you buy this, but uh, that's all I got for you this week. We did do a bunch of stuff uh, and additionally, but we have to you know, keep it to like 15, 20 minutes. And yeah, I, I'm really excited about the feedback that we get every week from these videos. We get a ton of people emailing, commenting and messaging us uh, regarding all of the stuff. And the nice thing is we can continue to do this pretty organically. We don't have to actually put any effort into trying to talk about stuff because we're doing so many cool things. So um, I'm really excited for where the series could go in the next year, two years, five years, and uh, potentially want to even do some design videos where I just go live for an hour and people can tune in and design something with me and offer their own inputs and I'll just try to do my best talking about how my thought process is around making something that doesn't exist. So uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one and I'm going to do a full video on this probably next, I'm assuming.